Our last section in Chapter 13 are the reflexes. You have two major categories of reflexes in your body. You have your inborn or intrinsic reflexes. These are your rapid, involuntary, predictable motor responses to a stimulus. An example of this would be if um, someone holds your nose, you open your mouth so you can breathe. You touch something hot, you withdraw it. You're typically born with those sort of reflexes. The other category of reflex is going to be an, a learned or acquired reflex. You, uh, you develop these reflexes as you do something repetitively. The best example I could come up with would be driving. Have you ever been driving down the road and realized you were paying absolutely no attention to what you were doing? That's because you have developed a memory. You know how to do that. When you see a red light, you immediately contract your muscles. You need to hit your stop, your brake. You know you need to stop when you see that. That's a learned reflex. Every reflex in your body is made of five components and makes up what we call the reflex arc. A true reflex does not require higher level processing of the brain. It goes directly through the spinal cord. The five parts of a reflex arc are, number one, your sensory receptor. This can be any of the type of sensory receptors we have discussed. But we, it begin, the reflex begins with the sensory receptor being activated. The sensory receptor then activates a sensory neuron that moves into the spinal cord. Once in the spinal cord, that sense then activates the third part, the interneuron. This is where your integration and processing occurs. The interneuron then synapses with a motor neuron leaving out the opposite side of the spinal cord until it moves into the effector organ, which is going to be usually a muscle fiber or some sort of gland that is going to respond to the original stimulus. It is important for you to develop reflex arcs that, so that you do not have to always rely on signals moving all the way to your brain for you to respond. Now what we're going to do is explore some of the different types of reflex arcs you have in your body. The first reflex is a stretch reflex. And whether you realize it or not, this is probably the one you're most familiar with. If you've ever gone to a doctor and they had you sit on the table and they hit your knee with something, they were checking to make sure that everything was okay in your spinal cord by checking your stretch reflexes. Stretch reflexes are used on an everyday basis to help us maintain our muscle tone and our posture. The way a stretch reflex works, if you activate that reflex, it's going to cause a muscle to contract in response to the activation of the sensory receptor. And I'm going to flip to a picture to show you the one that you're most familiar with. is called the patellar reflex. In this reflex, the quadricep contracts while the antagonistic muscle, the hamstring, relaxes. So if I am sitting with my legs dangling and someone activates the sensory receptor here in my tendon, that is going to then activate the stretch of this upper muscle, the quadricep. When that stretch receptor is activated, that sends a signal through my sensory neuron. Inter it integrates at the interneuron and then sends signals out motor neurons and goes to effectors. With this, there's going to be two effectors. You're going to cause a contraction of the quadricep, the muscle that was stretched, and a relaxation of the antagonistic muscle, the hamstring. So as someone hits you on your knee, your leg comes up. Your leg is coming up because your quadricep is contracting and your hamstring is relaxing. Another type of reflex that you may not be quite as familiar with or not realize you're familiar with is a tendon reflex. Tendon reflexes cause the opposite reaction of a stretch reflex. 
when the best example I can come up with for a tendon reflex occurs, let's say that we're um, lifting a weight with our arms. So as we flex our forearms, our bicep is going to contract. If we do this repeatedly to the point that we are causing a strain on that bicep, then our tendon will be activated and our tendon is going to begin to stretch. When that tendon stretches, that tells us that we're putting too much strain on our bicep and that sends the reflex to our contracting muscle, our bicep, that it needs to relax. Because if we keep contracting that muscle, we are going to damage it. Flexor reflexes are the reflexes that are initiated in response to pain. Think about what happens if you reach your hand out and touch a hot stove. How do you immediately, without even thinking about it, pull your hand away? You're going to flex that forearm. You would never extend your forearm to try to get it out of the way. It naturally wants to flex. That's how you withdraw that body part that is being threatened by the pain. The crossed extensor reflex will sometimes accompany a flexor reflex if the flexor reflex is occurring on a weight-bearing limb. So now let's think about in an example if we stepped on a nail. If I stepped on a nail with my left leg, my flexor reflex is going to cause my hamstrings to contract to help me along with my, a few other muscles at the same time to get my left leg off of that nail. If I do just the flexor reflex and don't take care of the opposite side of my body, I would fall down. So at the same time, your flexor reflex is taking the threatened limb off of the pain, the opposite limb is going to extend muscles to help you maintain your balance and not fall over. The last two types of reflexes are two superficial reflexes on your body these are used as integrity tests. The plantar reflex tests the spinal cord integrity from lumbar vertebrae number four to fused sacral vertebrae number two. The way this works, if you touch the plantar or bottom surface of someone's foot, their toes should curl. So you probably have at least seen this on a movie when they come in and they want to check and see if somebody has any feeling in their limbs, they'll rub something at the bottom of the foot. They're looking for the toes to curl. If the toes curl in, that says the spinal cord is fine, at least in this region. If you get a Babinski sign, that's where the big toe is going to dorsiflex while the other toes fan out laterally, that says something's wrong in that region of the spinal cord. Another superficial reflex is the abdominal reflex. It tests the integrity of the spinal cord a little higher in the lower thoracic region. The way this works, the abdomen is touched near the umbilical or belly button region, and if the umbilicus, the skin around the belly button, moves towards the area you're stimulating, that tells you that the thoracic region is okay.